they've attached to the shell. At Corn Point Lab on the Chalk Tank River in Cambridge, the makers of baby oysters are celebrating a first. In 2023, we've produced one billion spat from the setting pier since April, and we're still going. More than 50 tanks are part of the production. They house the cages that hold the shells where the babies attach. We are here seven days a week. We don't really get weekends or holidays because they are our babies. And if you don't come in and take care of them, they're not going to do so well. And ultimately, it's Mother Nature. Mother Nature was in a fantastic mood this year. We had great salinity. We were able to start spawning, and we've been spawning since March. A partnership is at play here, too. We rode down to this mound of shells. Oyster Recovery Partnership is responsible for the stockpile. ORP gets some of them from the shell recycling program that restaurants participate in. It needs to be aged out in the environment for at least a year. Then it gets cleaned, washed, put into these cages, then we bring it back down, we bring it down to this pier and it's put in these cages in, in, um, in the tanks and that's where the Horn Point staff will come and introduce the larvae. Most of the one billion spat on shells stay in Maryland where the Department of Natural Resources is focused on the large scale sanctuary program. The one billion oysters that have been produced so far DNR has purchased to the tune of 861 million. Uh, the majority of it, and those are going to our sanctuaries, primarily the big, we call them the big five, the five large-scale restoration sanctuaries where there's a, a Bay Program commitment to restore oysters. They are Harris Creek, Tredavon River, Little Chop Tank River, Upper St. Mary's River, and the Minokin River. The sanctuary program is designed with the hope, and we say hope because it's actually not a proven fact yet, that by increasing oysters in sanctuaries, we can help ignite oyster reproduction throughout the bay. In recent years, oyster growers dealt with chronic low salinity following historic rainfall. With us having a great year this year, I think we've satisfied a lot of the need, probably not all of it, but we've satisfied a lot. Stephanie Alexander took us to the hatchery to show us the long process before reaching the pier. So this is the beginning. So this is the start of everything. We rely on adult oysters. We condition them. So what you see in here is different temperature water flowing over the oysters. Uh, in the spring, we're heating water to mimic springtime warming up. And right now, the summer, we're mimicking springtime by chilling the water and keeping it cold. She shared this video of eggs and sperm being released into the water. The larvae is then fed algae that's made at the lab before it's mature enough to be introduced to the shells in the setting tanks. We take a look under the microscope. So these are the oyster shells that came out of the setting tanks that yeah, we just so saw. Yeah, so where we were just standing when I was lifting, these are some of them. So it's a larvae that has attached to the shell. Last year, in 2022, we actually celebrated our 10 billionth oyster in the water. This year, we have put 1 billion oysters in the water. It took us 30 years to get to 10 billion. In one year, we have put 1 billion oysters in the water in these sanctuaries. The partners say these big numbers are proof that actual progress is happening to restore the oyster population. We're not going to get this back to you know, the 1800s. We're going to get the oyster population to a point where it's healthy and it's contributing to the health of the bay and our seafood economy. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.